We've talked about DNA replicating before in the cell cycle, before mitosis or meiosis, and we made it pretty simple. We just said, here we have this chromosome, and they replicate it. And now there are two F sister chromatids. Now we're going to look at the same process with DNA replication. We're going to take the magic out of it. And that's a lot of what this class is about, is kind of taking some of the mystery out of things, saying there's an actual mechanism for how this happens. It's very specific. Um, there are enzymes at work. There's a process and rules to be followed inside of your cell. They're phenomenal and amazing. I mean, the, the idea that DNA copies itself at hundreds of nucleotides a second it is just mind-blowing, but it has its limitations. It's not um, an engineered system. And so keep that in mind when we take a look. And the more we zoom into this molecular scale, the more imagination we have to use, right? Um, you've actually seen chromosomes. That there are things you can look in a microscope or images of that and still kind of picture, okay, it's small, but it's there. But once we start looking at DNA, it's a bunch of letters and shapes and molecules that really aren't real, right? They're just our representations of them. So that's the big challenge here. Uh, and so hopefully some analogies and practice uh, will get you over that hurdle to be able to understand what's going on inside of your cells, even as we speak. At the heart of it, So in prokaryotes, this DNA polymerase would make its loop around the entire circular chromosome and come back to the beginning, kick out the RNA primer, and uh, we would need to then stitch back together, if you can imagine in another strand, uh, the two pieces of DNA. And so we need to bring in an enzyme called ligase for that to stitch them together. So. That's prokaryotes, and on this strand we do the same thing moving in this direction with an, another primer. One of the odd bits in the eukaryotic system is here's our other one which we haven't done yet. So this strand right here we call the leading strand. This strand is the lagging strand, and that's because DNA polymerase actually works in a complex. And so there's kind of this mega DNA polymerase moving along this direction. And that's not a problem, as we pointed out, for this particular one. But in this one, we're going the wrong direction, kind of like going the wrong way on a street. So we still need to lay down primers. And so ignore these bits for now. I'm going to put a primer in here, and I'll put another one in over here. And so here's kind of the odd way that this works. As DNA polymerase is moving this direction on that strand, this one loops around so that it's going in the correct direction, right? Because this, if we fold it, is going from three to five now, instead of five to three, because I've turned it inside out, so to speak. And so here's how that's going to operate. Is I'm going to start at the primer. That gives DNA polymerase a chance to find its way there. And then it's going to match up complementary bases. I think I messed a couple of those up. Uh, so we have that one. And then, as this one moves down this, we're going to come back to here and proceed down this direction again. And so, when we get to here, we can remove the RNA primer. Now we've gotten to this point, and what's not really shown on this one 
is that these are not connected, right? There's still a bit of a gap in here where we left off, and there we need ligase to come in and make that bond between those, actually out in here, between those nucleotides. So that's the job of ligase. It's something we won't necessarily model, but it's an important aspect in cells uh, and has some, some real applications uh, when you get more into molecular genetics.